Hey guys, guess what? I finally found an all ohm smart energy monitor that can keep track of my total energy consumption as well as my individual energy consumption. And it doesn't cost a fortune. Over the past one year, my bill has been experiencing significant fluctuations. Some months extremely high, other months it drops a little bit low. And I have no clue what could be causing those fluctuations. My utility bill only gives me one number, my total energy consumed. So over the past one year, I've been on a mission to try and figure out a way to keep track of my individual energy consumption across the entire house. I've tried solutions such as smart outlets with energy monitoring functionalities like the EVE smart outlet. But the problem with that is, first of all, it's only limited to 120 volts, which means that I can track things like my dryer, my water eaters, or you know, my oven, my range, microwave, anything that basically is 240 volts, I can track those. It is also extremely expensive because it means I have to replace all the outlets across the entire house and add all of them to my own internet, which means congested Wi-Fi space as well. The other solution I had gone with is to make sure I purchase appliances with energy monitoring functionalities. But then again, that means replacing all my appliances that don't currently have that feature. And also some don't even have that feature on the market at all, like my water heater. So when Siemens reached out to me about their in-app old home energy monitor that actually keeps track of the total energy consumption as well as individual device consumption, and it only costs about 265 US dollars, that got me excited because it also clamps at the electrical panel. So that means I don't have to go around every single outlet to change stuff. I just need to make changes down in my electrical room. One place where every single electrical device comes through. The beauty of this system is that it keeps track of the total energy usage and individual consumption right at the panel itself. And it can track up to 50 amps and up to 240 volts as well. It's amazing because now I don't have to worry about replacing the entire outlet across the house and I can track whatever device regardless of whatever is plugged into them. Alrighty, let's dive right into what's inside the box and then once the installation is complete I'll kind of go over the features and what you can expect out of this device after I have tried it out myself. Let's talk about what's inside the box. First of all, we have 16 branch circuit clamps, each rated for 50 amps. These snap onto individual breakers to track energy usage for different zones or appliances like my basement suite or my kitchen. There's also two large 200 amp CT clamps for the main power line. This monitors the total energy going into the home. One of them can also track your solar production and how much you're sending back to the grid. The main monitoring unit ties everything together. It has ports for all the 16 branch CT circuits and the terminal block for power, an ethernet port for wired setup and a coaxial connector for the included Wi-Fi antenna. Plus, they include splice wires, a wiring harness, and the circuit level to make installation cleaner and easier. Before diving into the installation process, I had to think about which 16 breakers I wanted to monitor. But instead of picking and choosing, I decided to go with two Siemens in-app energy monitors. The system is limited to just 16 branch circuits per unit, but it allows you to nest multiple monitors within the app. That way, I could monitor way more circuits, including everything in both my basement suite and the upstairs unit. I started thinking through which specific circuits I wanted to include. I started by tagging all the breakers I had planned to monitor. I used a blue masking tape for breakers assigned to the basement monitor and a green masking tape for those that would be going to the upstairs monitor. At the same time, I labeled each breaker with masking tape that included the breaker number and if the breaker was part of the space saver slot. Now this is where two breakers actually share a single physical slot. I appended an A or a B to indicate the top or the bottom breaker. For example, slot 16 might house two separate 20 amp circuits, so I labeled them 16A and 16B. Doing this upfront was crucial, especially with so many space saver breakers in my panel. But once the panel cover is removed, it's easy to lose track of what's what. Since I have a mix of space saver breakers and 240 volt appliances, I had to plan for both, since a single slot can house two completely separate circuits. Appliances like my water eater, dryer, and EV charger are powered by a double pole breaker, meaning a single device spans across two breakers. You can monitor this individually with two CT clamps one for each leg, but that heats up into your limited number of available inputs. To get around that, 
I use the feature in the app called a multiplier, which lets you place a single city clamp on one leg and have the reading automatically doubled. It's a trade-off, less wiring and more coverage, but slightly less accurate if the load is unbalanced. For me, maximizing coverage was the priority. The labels in the packaging only go from 1 to 16, so I wrote the actual breaker number next to each label and wrapped it around the CT wire. That way, I'll know exactly which clamp went to which circuit when it was time to configure things in the app. Always use gloves and eye protection when working inside of an electrical panel. Or better yet, bring in a qualified electrician like I did. We began by removing the panel cover and immediately ran into a challenge. The space was extremely tight. The original electrician had left a lot of extra wire slack, which made routing everything a bit tricky. We began by mounting the main monitor unit inside of the panel to make sure it would fit. Then, using one of the knockouts, we connected the Ethernet cable to the port on the device. Next, we removed the cover over the main power lines and installed the 200 amp CT clamps. Towards the breaker. Okay, so we have to go that way around the wire. But in this case, because we're coming in the hot wire, current's coming in. So we're going to put it on with the arrow towards the bus. Pulls into place. This are required for monitoring total energy consumption. If you have solar, this is where you would want to connect additional city clamps to monitor generation. They're kind of idiot proof, so you can't put them in the wrong spot. So it's going to be what you call it A phase. After that, we installed the 16 branch circuit city clamps for the first monitor. This snaps around the wires for each breakers and locks into place. Due to the cramped space, it took some careful routing. You can shorten the CT wires by loosening the terminals, trimming the 22 AWG wires and reconnecting them. But my electrician preferred to leave the extra slack to allow for future rearrangements. I actually agreed since I'm always tweaking things for testing in my space anyways. Another important connection is the voltage sensing wiring harness. There are a few ways to connect this, but we opted to wire it into an arc fault breaker using adjacent breaker slot. The red and blue wires must be connected to two breakers that are next to each other. If you have a spare breaker in your panel, those will work too. This step is essential because the monitor needs voltage reference to give accurate real-time power readings, not just the current. With the first monitor fully wired, we then moved on to the second one. Since there wasn't enough space to mount both units inside of my panel, we proceeded to mount the second unit externally on the outside of my panel. The installation process was quite identical to the first monitor, except the second unit doesn't need to be connected to the main CT clamps. We routed the CT clamp wires through another knockout and connected everything to the terminals on the second unit. Then we put the panel covers back turned the power on and moved over to the app to finish the setup. During the first time setup, the app gives you the option to follow an installation guide, but I skipped that since I had already gone through the documentation on Siemens' website. The app automatically checks the wiring. In our case, it flagged an error with how the voltage wires were connected, since we initially had them in the same breaker. After fixing that, we were good to go. The first thing I did was to label all the branch circuits in the app. Since I had already labeled everything physically with tapes and numbers, this step was super quick. Then I went in and configured multipliers for appliances that spans two breakers like my EV chargers, water eaters and dryers. Most ohms are only two-phase so you usually only need one or two multipliers. If you have a three-phase power, you might actually need more. Check with your electrician if you're not sure. So. It's been over three months since I installed the in-app energy monitor and I have collected enough data to be able to analyze trends, patterns, and even my usage history. So we can actually put the device to test by diving into the app and identify what device is actually causing my increased usage. Let's go into the app and talk about this. Now, once we open up the app, we're greeted with the main page. Now this page gives us a total energy consumed for the entire house. And um, we can actually see it based on real time, or we can go down to the minute, the hour, the last day, week, month, or even year. Of course, I can't get a year. It's going to be year to date because I've not added for a year yet. But 
you're not just limited to just the energy in kilowatt hours you can actually go down to the unit of measurement and you can switch it to other options so many other options here but i only care about the currency so I switch out to the currency and it gives me a dollar amount now this you can actually relate more to it to see how much it's costing and i can switch it again to all the different time frames as well and it gives me the dollar amount for that to work you actually need to input how much your service provider charges you per kilowatt hour which you can do right in the household information and you can set your utility rate mine is about eight cents per kilowatt hours now you're not just limited to seeing just the total energy consumed because where's the fun in that my utility bill pretty much does that you can actually break things down once you smash that uh, drop down menu you actually see a total breakdown of every single device that has been attached to that monitor and um, over here you can see it's 100 which is basically the combination of the top which is my uh, upstairs and then the basement monitor because i have two of them right 100 and the basement is about 16 percent of that total consumption then right now my ac is consuming or over the past one day this is my one of my if not my biggest consumer right off the bat you can see it there 25 percent so We've been running this AC because the weather has been warm for the past, you know, one week and over the past one hour, it's 11%. So right there, I can immediately identify area for potential improvement. We need to turn the AC off because <laughs> that's one of the biggest consumers right there. I can go down to look at it even on a per minute basis as well. And it is still <laughs> one of my highest consumer. And we can also look and identify other ones as well. If I go back down to the last one day and if i look right here my water hot water tank 10 percent maybe we can take less showers and then we can go and look at my network rack <laughs> that's a huge one too another 10 percent and if i want to kind of go back in time to kind of see what I, you know what the, the power consumption is like in time you can go back to select that network rack and now i can even look at it on a you know time specific time when this different incident is happening so 8 p.m two cents two cents so it's been cost every uh, hour it cost me about two cents to run my uh, network rack as you can see right there so it doesn't seem like a lot right now but the problem is again in canada the actual usage is not the big deal for us the biggest consumption is actually all the fees which is almost um, more than 50 percent of the total bill itself so i can try and reduce my consumption that's the only thing i can control it also can tie to other systems like your thermostat, your furnace system, although that list is not very large right now. So what it does is you tie your furnace system to it and during peak usage, if your AC is running at that time, it can look at that and say, okay, we're gonna dial back the temperature. So if you have 21 degrees, it will take it up to 23 or 24, depending on what preference you have set there. And then that way your AC would not run as frequently during that time frame. essentially making sure that your usage stays low. And then once the usage drops, say other things have been, have stopped running, then it can bring it back down again. And the best part, I can finally track every time my brother charges his EV and send him an invoice. <laughs> so that's just some of the few ways you can use this device. For how much it costs and the value it offers and even the ease of installation, I think this is a good value to add to your own. Now that brings me to the end of the review of this device. Now if there are some things or features that I have not addressed or there are some things that I touched on that you don't quite get, feel free to you know leave questions down in the comment section and I will do my best to answer them. That pretty much concludes my video. Tie here. Peace out.